Oh, look at that. Now that is a bus, a beast, a dinosaur, a gargantuan predator of the deep. Well, not so deep this year with the lack of rain we've had, but uh, the river has risen over the last few days. And uh, that is one of the big male crocodiles that resides at the crossings. Now, I thought it was the biggest one. I'm not sure if it is. <coughs> oh, hello, yellow bird stalk. Oh, and look at that, there's a little crocodile. Oh, he's so cute in comparison. Do you see him, Dove? Oh no, the car's in the way. Oh dear, I'll have to move shortly. But yeah, we've got quite a few crocs. It's been, it was a chilly morning this morning, and they're out basking. And generally you can tell the difference between a male and female based on size. So the big male crocodiles are much, much bigger and thicker in the neck. And uh, they tend to be quite, quite territorial in the Mara River. So what happens is they will be making sure that no other male crocodile gets this prime spot where the wildebeest like to commit suicide. And also, you can see he's surrounded by some, uh, well, I suppose they're lovely and luscious if you're a crocodile, but some lasses. And uh, so this prime territory will have good breeding females as well as uh, ample supply of food. Now, some of these crocodiles are in excess of four meters, and uh, they are very, very big, big beasts. Now, remember, hashtag safari live if you've got any questions for us now the other interesting thing about this part of the world and why i'm gazing about while you are looking at those crocodiles is this is core paradise pride territory and of course the four the musketeers scar siko hunter and morani um, occupy both sides of the river here and now i've often seen them on both sides and they like to sleep under these croton bushes that are all around us so uh, we always check in every little spot of shade around here to make sure there isn't a lovely lion lying and we can have the apex predator of land and the apex predator of uh, the water in Africa or inland Africa at least uh, in the same same area. Now can you have some hippos around as well? Now let us show you the tiny little croc. Now uh, well, let's let's get him on camera first then I can I can t tell you more about him. Vivi was wondering, what do crocodiles eat in the Mara? Well, they actually, or well, the smaller crocs, will eat a lot of fish. So Dave's just leaving the camera there so we can try to get the little guy into picture. We also don't want to go for a swim. Have we got him? No. A little bit more? A little bit more. Oh, oh dear. Okay, wait, let me try something here quickly. What if I do that, Dave? Not. Okay, I've got one more trick up my sleeve. Let me just... Let me just get out of here. Now, um, the crocodiles in the Mara, the smaller ones and that will, will eat fish and um, birds and whatever they might come across. But those really big beasts uh, normally will only feed during the migration and they'll be able to sustain themselves for almost six or seven months. Dev, are we winning? Uh, no, oh goodness gracious me. I'm trying to think. Hey, let me go round. He is such a cute little crocodile. We're trying our best to show him to you. So they will feed off the zebra, the Thompson's gazelle, and the wildebeest when the migration arrives. I think this is the one, Dave. No! Oh dear. Um, I don't know what else I can do. Unless we try straight on ahead. There? No! That's about our last chance. We got him! There! Yay! Hello, little.
little one. Be careful, that big one will eat you. Now, sorry about the slight obscure from the vehicle, but that's the only way we can get this croc in shot. Um, now, David, who's in Napa, was wondering, do you, where does the season for baby crocodiles? Um, well, it depends on where you are in Africa. I'm not 100% sure of the season here, but the breeding season in most parts of Africa, it varies month to month due to uh, heat and, and area. Normally at sort of the end of Oh, October, November, or uh, well, October, the males will start getting very aggressive and uh, and chasing off other males from areas. But um, and then normally, well, sorry, a bit earlier than that actually. September is when that normally happens, and and then mating, October, laying then happens sort of in the summer months, January or December, January, and uh, then they hatch uh, a couple of months later than that. But now that one, even though it is tiny, is probably about two or three years old. So they, they do grow quite slowly in the wild, and especially probably up here, because it's it's, it's quite cold, uh, they will grow, grow slower. So at really warmer temperatures, crocodiles tend to grow faster, and at colder temperatures, they, they grow a bit slower. Now, one of the, the fascinating things about crocodiles is that the temperature that the eggs uh, are kept at control the sex ratio of the crocodiles. So uh, the warmer temperature will have a, a, a nest that is produces almost all males and a slightly cooler temperature produces all females. Now, so generally the, the the, the eggs on top will become males and the eggs lo lower down will be become females and uh, it all all just depends uh, on where and whether the, the, the bushes uh, whether the nest is in shade or in full sun so it is actually quite fascinating uh, how just the temperature can, can can determine the sex of the animals now on the other side of the river we have impala buffalo topi there we go, there's some buffalo, lovely little herd. There's the turpy being the policeman on top of his termite mound. And then the impala a little bit further to the right. There the impala are. Oh, look at those big horns. Oh, massive. Ah, now, let's just slide back slightly so Dave can get the beastie crocodiles again. How's that, Dave? Now, those those big, big, big crocodiles there could easily be um, 90 to 100 years old, and uh, they once they attain that massive size, they will stay in, in a relatively small stretch of river. Now, that is quite unique to, to ecosystems like the Mara, uh, where you have this massive influx of food seasonally. And in other parts of Africa, they will be quite territorial, but over a much bigger area. So here in the Mara, they are able to, to sort of really dominate a small section of the river for the majority of their sort of massive lives uh, once they're big enough. Okay, well, we're going to keep moving, see if we can find a scar and the Paradise Pride. While we do that, uh, let's go see what Taylor's up to.